Amen. Open your Bibles now, please, to the book of John, chapter 14. John, chapter 14. Now, again, Jesus had instructed his disciples that he was going to go away, and they were filled with uh, a disheartening spirit, and they were so sad. And so Jesus speaks these words as we read in John, chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father, ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. And that day you shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. And he that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will, be, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, the marvelous passage of Scripture, and almost all the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the Bible definitely teaches in no uncertain terms that God is a trinity. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. These three are one God, three persons making up one God. Now, that's something, it's a mystery. We don't understand how there can be three in one, but the 
Bible definitely teaches, not three personalities, but three distinct people, three distinct persons, but only making up one Godhead, one God eternally existing in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, they are co-equal. Everything that can be said about the deity of Christ can be said about the deity of the Holy Spirit. Everything that's said about the deity of the Father can be said about the deity of the Son. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are equally deity. They are equally God. Everything that's said about the nature of God, that is, is eternality, forever, forever, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God, can be said of the Spirit, can be said of the Son. Everything about God, He's all-powerful. So is the Son. So is the Holy Spirit. He's everywhere present. So is the Father. So is uh, the Holy Spirit. And let me say this to you. Get this down, because we're living in a time when a lot of false doctrine is being preached about God and about Jesus and about the Holy Spirit. And so you want to understand this. It's very important that you understand what the Scriptures teach. When we say God the Father, we mean God the Father. When we say God the Son, we're talking about equal with God the Father, God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we say God the Holy Spirit, we're talking about the same Holy Spirit that's equal to the Father and equal to the Son, one God eternally existing in three persons. Now I hope you get that down because I read recently, and we're going to share some of this in the evening service, and they uh, did a poll of uh, Christians all over the United States, and it was amazing to me. I, I almost fell down. I, I read that. I said, I can't believe it. And I read it again. And then I went to another site to double check it to see uh, and how many of people who profess to be Christians who do not even understand these basics that we're talking about. And so get this down. Understand it. Now Jesus said, I'm going to the Father. And I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you. And he's going to be another comforter. The word another is the, the word that means another of equal quality and value. And there's a different word for another that means another of a different kind. But the word that's used here is another of the very same kind. Jesus said, everything that I've been to you, the Holy Ghost will be to you. I said, under marvelous thought, and yet the average Christian does not experience the nearness of God like he wants us to experience. Jesus walked with them. He talked with them. And he said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, and he's going to do the same thing for you that I've been doing for you. I'm going to send you another comforter just like I am. Now, the Holy Spirit is to be to us everything that Jesus was to the disciples as they walked on the shores of Galilee. The Holy Spirit. Now, the Bible says in, in his words here, and the wonderful, marvelous translation of the Greek word, he said, comforter. The Holy Spirit, who is the comforter. That's a great word. Uh, it, it's a word that comes from the Greek word parakletos, means one called alongside to help, one to strengthen, one to bless, one to defend, uh, one to be a friend to, one to enable one to do others, the one who will be the teacher. And he said, he's the comforter. And I was reading this not long ago, and I, I was struck by the thought, what does a comforter do? He comforts. Oh, that was a little deep. What does a comforter do? He comforts. Amen. Right? Now get this. What the Lord is saying to us is a marvelous truth. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. He's the one who, and he says it in more than one place. He said it in about four different places. In fact, there's five different times this word parakletos is translated in the Bible. Four times it's given to us in the book of John as comforter. Once over in 1 John, it's translated advocate. And it means the same thing. Listen to this, what he's saying. He is the comforter. Now, why do we need a comforter? Why do we need a comforter? There's certain times we need comfort in our lives. Now, I know I'm talking to people who are above that, but the rest of us, we, we need comfort sometimes. Get, get this. When do we really need comfort? I think we need comfort when, when we feel lonely. Has there ever been a time you felt really lonely? I mean, you could feel lonely in a big crowd. 
But there's sometimes you just feel loneliness sweeping over your soul. And it's such a loneliness that you can just almost reach out and touch it. Elijah, that great prophet of God, been upon Mount Carmel, called the fire of God down. Then he ran when he heard Jezebel was after him, put a price on his head. And he ran, he was hiding in a cave. And then the Lord came, spoke to him. And this, listen to what he said. He didn't come in the wind or in the earthquake or in the fire, but he came in a still, small voice. We're talking about the Holy Ghost speaking to him here. Get this now. And what he said to him was this. He said, Lord, they've digged down all your altars. They've killed all your prophets. And I, only I am alone. No one but me. He felt so lonely in that cave up there that it was palpable. The loneliness that came over his soul. And he could say that even to God Almighty, even to the Spirit of God. I'm lonely and there's no one that stands with me. And then the Lord encouraged him and said, no, no, you're not alone. I've got 6,000 had bowed the feet and need to bail. You're not alone. Well, do you know? When we have that still loneliness coming over us, do you know the Holy Spirit speaks to us and he reminds us of the words of Jesus. He said, I will bring you remembrance what he said. That's what he came to do, to give us comfort. Jesus gave comfort. He gives us comfort. He says, well, Jesus said, I'll, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Jesus said, oh, I'll be with you to the end of the world. You're not alone. You feel alone. The devil will tell you you're alone, but you're not alone. The Spirit of God will give you the comfort of saying, He, God Himself, is with you and will never, ever leave you alone. How marvelous that is. When else do you need comfort? Well, you need comfort when you're sad. Now, I know that you folk are just overflowing with joy all the time and you never need this, but just in case you run across somebody you can share this with. <laughs> Sadness. Does sadness ever come into your heart? And sometimes you don't even know why. Sometimes the, the psalmist cried out and said, I'm in the deeps. Uh, he, he said, uh, and, and he talked about weeping and not even knowing why he's weeping. But, but the sadness came over his soul that was just so real. And sometimes the devil's going to work on us and he's going to do his dead level best to make us feel a sadness, a sorrow down inside that we can't understand. And when that happens, the comforter is here. And the comforter is going to say, no, no. Jesus said, my joy, I leave with you. I'm writing these things to you that your joy may be full. Jesus is here, the comforter, is saying, Jesus said to the people, I'm going to give you fullness of joy. The comforter says, here is Jesus bringing you this fullness of joy. He brings the package of Jesus, joy, to our souls when we feel that great need of joy instead of the sadness that comes over us. Sometimes that sadness is going to come. It does in every life. If you read the Psalms, and I read the Psalms through once a month, five day, chapters a day, and, and uh, read it through, and you get to feel what uh, the psalmist said. Oh, sometimes he said, no man cares for my soul. Oh, he was wrong. He couldn't have been more wrong, but that's what he felt. He really said, he felt it. Nobody cares. And sometimes uh, you might feel that too. Uh, nobody really cares. But the Lord said, yes, he cares. And the Holy Spirit reminds you that Jesus really cares for your soul. Even when you're so sad, you can't explain it. There are other times you may have depression. And that's a little bit deeper than sadness. I mean, when that real depression in you comes over your soul and you don't know why, but you just can't seem to get any joy in your soul and you, you're just struggling with that thing day after day. Listen, the comforter understands. The comforter says, come, Jesus said, unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Just lay your 
your head upon my shoulder and I will hold you just like Jesus did the disciples. The Holy Ghost says, come near and I will give you the comfort you need in your life. Now there are sometimes, get this, sometimes we need comfort because we've been defeated. Now I know this is something that happens in every life. Defeat is a part of life as well as victory. You understand that. Actually, it's, it's true in every part of life. Did you know that in his day, Babe Ruth hit more home runs than anybody else? Everybody knows the name Babe Ruth. What a wonderful hitter he was and all that. Did you know he also had another record? Strikeout. The strikeout. He had more strikeouts than anybody else. Oh, you don't think about that much. But did you know uh, if a hitter in any of the leagues, if he hits three times out of ten times he gets up to bat, he's got a great batting average. 333, that's a great batting average in the, in the big leagues. But he strikes out or misses seven times out of ten. Defeat is a part of life. It really is. And understand this. We need to get a hold of the truth that we, every one of us, can't have our way all the time in everything in our lives. You're not always going to get your way. If you're going to be happy in life, if you're married, you better understand that real quick. <laughs> I mean, understand something about human relations. We need each other, but we also, we also are going to fail each other. And we are going to fail, but the ones who succeed are not those who fail, but the ones who get up again and walk again after they failed. The comforter comes and he reminds us. What do you think about Simon Peter? Well, Simon Peter was a great apostle, usually the spokesman of the apostles. Someone said the only time he opened his mouth was to change, change feet, but because he, a lot of times, he had his foot in his mouth. But he was a good man. But Jesus came uh, in the garden. He said, now, men, I'm going to tell you, every one of you are going to forsake me and flee. Everyone. Simon Peter said, not me. These, all these others, they may do it, but not me. I mean, you put me in the wrong class. I'm not in that class. I, I mean, I'm not in the class of those that fail and forsake. I'm in, the, I'm in the winning class. Never will I forsake you. Jesus said, Simon Peter, didn't you hear what I said? I'm God in the flesh. I'm saying, you're going to forsake me this night. And the fact is, he said, not only are you going to forsake me, you're going to deny me. What? All might deny you, but not I. I will never deny thee. I will go to my death before I deny you. Jesus said, before the rooster crows the morning, cock crowing, you're going to deny me three times. Not me. Others may do it, but I will not. The soldiers came. He pulls out his sword, takes a swing, and cuts off the ear of one of the soldiers. Oh, think about that. Woo, man, he's powerful. I'll show you, Jesus. I'm not going to deny you. I'm going to fight. Before that night was over, he denied that he even knew Christ, that he was one of the disciples, that he was one of the Christians. He denied that he knew him three different times. He denied him. But you know what Jesus had said to him before that? You've got to love this. Folk, we have such a wonderful Savior. He had said to him, Peter, you're going to deny me. But after you're converted, after you get it right, strengthen the brethren. What? You're going to deny me three times? And yet, you're going to get right? The word converted means to changed. That means he's not talking about salvation. He's been saved. He's talking about change. We all need conversion from time to time from our changed attitudes. and all. We need to be converted. After you're converted, strengthen the brethren. You're going to get right. What? I'm not going to fail. Yes, you are. But you're going to get right. And you're going to still serve me. You're going to strengthen the brethren. 
Do you get that? You see, the Savior said, the Spirit is going to be the comforter, and He's going to remind you of the things that Jesus said. And when you fail, the devil is going to be on your back. He's going to be stomping on you. He's going to tell you you're worthless. You're useless. If you were a real Christian, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't say that. You wouldn't think that. You would not be this, this, this. And the devil's going to accuse you. The Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. And uh, what's going to happen? The Spirit of God, the comforter, is going to come and he's going to wrap his arms around you and say, you know, the Lord restores Simon Peter and he can restore you too. He can do that. And then he will remind you of the parable that Jesus gave. You remember this parable? Jesus said there was a very successful farmer he had uh, a lot of crops. He had servants, and he had servants in bunkhouses and all of this. And he had two sons. And the youngest one came to him and said, Dad, divide up the inheritance. I want my, I want my part right now. Now, you understand that the Jewish families, the oldest son got a double portion. Anytime there's a division, there was a double portion for the oldest son. If there were four children, they made five portions, and the oldest son got a double portion. That was in the law. So what that meant was the younger son said, go ahead and divide it up now. My older brother's going to get a double portion, and I'm just going to take the other portion. But I don't care. I want mine now. So... The father very sadly said, okay. And he took all of it and divided it up and gave the son his portion. And boy, he left town right away. He caught the first train out of town. Wagon train. <laughs> Camel train. And uh, he ends up down in the devil's place. And the Bible said he squandered all of his living in riotous living. Oh, he was having a big time. And as long as he had money to spend, everybody was his friend. That's just the way it was. As long as he was buying around the booze or all that and that, whatever. As long as he had the money, he was really popular. But he ran out of money. When he ran out of money, he ran out of friends. And when he ran out of money and friends, he ran out of food. He's in a far country. He's away. And so he does the lowest thing he possibly could do as a Jewish boy. He goes and hires out to a Gentile farmer who has pigs to feed. Now pigs were unclean animals to the Jews. They weren't allowed to own one. They weren't allowed to even touch one. They were unclean animals to the Jews. So now he's down there and he's feeding the hogs. Can you imagine how low that must have been to that Jewish boy who had been raised in the lap of luxury, whose daddy owned this big, big spread, and he had servants out there and all this, and he had everything he could ever ask for, and now he's down on the lowest level you could possibly get out in the pig pen feeding the pigs. I had an evangelist one time come to church I pastored and, uh, and he had a song about that and he's talking about the boy that was feeding the pigs he said why are you still down here feeding these pigs at home there's plenty there's all everything you could imagine and so he's down there and he's thinking about eating hog food some I've heard of got real poor in the United States and have eaten dog food. Well, he was ready to eat hog food. And the Bible said he feigned, that is, he was thinking of it, thinking of eating, may I just say it in the nicest way, slop. That's what they give the hogs out on the farm. That's what he was going to eat. And he was sitting there thinking about 
eating that hog food. And then the thought came to him, you know, back at my father's house, the hired servants are a whole lot better off than I am. They have plenty to eat. Dad takes care of them. And, and they've got a place to stay, the bunkhouse out there. They've got everything they need. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this old hog pen and I'm going back home and I'm going to say to my father, Father, I have sinned before heaven and in your sight and make me no more to be as one of your sons. I'm not worthy to be called your son. Make me as a hired servant. And not only does he think about it, but the Bible says he gets up and heads home. I think that story. Jesus gives that wonderful story. And did you know what else happened? The Bible said that while he was a great way off, his father saw him. You know what that really teaches us? The father was looking for him every day since he left. He didn't know when he was going to come back, but he's out there looking for him, out there looking for him. He said he went in that direction. He'll have to come back that way. And the father's out there looking for him every day of this world. And finally, when he sees him, he recognizes him. That's my boy. He's bent over, but I can tell by the way he walks. That's my boy. And the boy comes close enough and the dad goes off running and runs and holds him and embraces him. And, and the boy says, Dad, I'm not worthy to be called your son. I've seen Oh, shut up. Shut up. Bring him a robe here. Bring a ring. Put it on his finger. Put shoes on his feet. Kill the fatted calf. My son is home again. Glory to God. Amen. Now get this. The Holy Spirit says to his people today, if you failed, if you've gone away from the Lord, if you've strayed from the Father, come on back home. The Father is waiting for you. Turn from the hog pen. Get out of that slop. Come on back to the Father. Come with a repentant attitude. I'm not worthy. And he will receive you back into fellowship with himself. The Comforter. How marvelous and wonderful to have the Comforter living within us. He'll be with you and he shall be in you. The Comforter bears witness. Now notice what else it says. He will teach you all things. You understand the scripture. You read the Bible. He will be your teacher. He will give you understanding of the scripture as you read. The more you read, the more understanding you'll have. And the Holy Spirit will give you understanding of the word of God. And then he says, he'll bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever he said unto you. He's going to help you remember when the time comes and you have that need. The comforter is going to say, well, remember what Jesus said? Here's what Jesus said about that. Jesus said he cares for you. Jesus said no one could possibly care for you like he cares for you. And he's always going to be there and he's going to provide for you. The Holy Spirit's going to say, remember these words of Jesus. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. God's going to take care of every one of your needs. You put him first, he's going to put you first. That's the promise of God. And the Spirit of God is going to remind us of all of these things. Now, who has the Holy Spirit? Every believer in Christ. When you receive Christ as your Savior, you are regenerated. That is, you're born again. And that is by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in the words of Jesus, when he was talking to Nicodemus, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a 
man be born of water and of the spirit. The water is the physical birth. And then there's the spiritual birth. He said, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh, the water birth, is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. But you're born of the spirit. Of the Spirit. The Spirit comes and brings the life of Christ to us. When we receive Christ, the Spirit of God comes and takes up His abode in our bodies. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, the Holy Ghost lives in your body. What you have of God, He's the one. And He's come to live right in you. And everyone who is born of God, everyone who has received Christ, also has the Holy Spirit. Not only so, but we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. And that guarantees our eternal redemption. Not only so, we, each of us, can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's the power of God. We can have the anointing of God, the power of God in our lives. And that is an optional thing. Everybody needs to be filled with the Spirit. The rest of it, he never commands you to be born of the Spirit. He doesn't command you to be baptized by the Spirit or to be uh, uh, indwelt by the Spirit or sealed by the Spirit. But he commands us to be filled with the Spirit. And what that means is to have the baptism of power, the power of God. And God's Holy Spirit will give you power to be a witness for Christ. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the Word of God with boldness. And God will give you the power to do anything he wants you to do. The Comforter has come. And all the power of God that was demonstrated in the life of Jesus is available to us because the Spirit of God lives within us. The Comforter. Would you let him comfort you today? Would you let him bring you his comfort? Would you let him wrap his arms around you and assure you of the love of Jesus? Assure you that he cares when your heart's broken? I'm sure that he cares no matter what trouble you've gotten into or what you've got, what troubles come into your life, that he cares about you. He loves you. And let the Spirit of God bring the comfort of God into your soul. Let's pray together, each one, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you that you loved us and sent him to be this toning sacrifice, the propitiation for our sins. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've done and all of your teaching and your holy life and your miracles and, and in the love you showed and in all of the things you've taught us. And then thank you that after your crucifixion and resurrection that you ascended back to heaven and sent the Holy Spirit. And thank you that the Spirit of God is with us. Thank you that God is in us of a truth. That the Spirit of God said He would never leave us, never forsake us, and would remind us of all the things you said. Jesus, I pray, bring to us the comfort that you promise by the Holy Spirit and help us to receive it. In Jesus' name, amen.